Hey guys, welcome to day four of the May Painting Challenge. As you can see, I've gotten the Griffin a little bit more worked on. I need to go back and do some more white highlights along the wings. Uh, I have found a good pattern for, for the birdie. You can see it gives it a little more dynamism, I guess. A little bit more pizzazz. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the back legs, the horsey part of it, and I'm not sure that that's the way the tail is going to stay. Because um, it, it's kind of, you know, brownish. And this, I just realized that this light is much better than the one I have over my uh, computer. I've been watching the uh, Luc Besson's The Professional again this morning as while I was painting. Uh, which, you know, uh, you can't, it's hard to beat that one for both awesomeness and really creepy, uh, creepiness. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to give away anything, so I won't. But if you have Netflix, you can watch it. Uh, it's a good movie, uh, right up there in odd, odd interesting, like the Fifth Element and some of his other work. Anyway, there's the griffin at the moment. Uh, <laughs> the stone part of the base was really easy. All I did was do, uh, a really dark gray covering over everything. I didn't really try to work into the cracks to leave it black and give it more depth and then just did uh, granite over the top and so, uh, with a uh, kind of a wet brushing uh, whatever. And so that looks nice. I'm going to tape off one side of this and paint it red and the other side and paint it a royal blue. Um, so that way it'll be red and blue for the old king and the king's cloak and a lot of his accents will also be red and blue so that'll kind of tie that in. Uh, the the leather work on the griffin, I think I'm, the saddle's going to be a nice leather brown but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go through and do red and blue on all the uh, the fancy bits of the leather to make it look like uh, kingly barding because I mean if you're going to have if you're going to have a flying griffin mount that could tear people to pieces you don't put just you know normal leather on them. But, uh, but anyway, that's where I am. I still have some touch-up work. Uh, I probably will be done with the Griffin by the end of this week, uh, maybe by Wednesday or Thursday. And then I'll get it on the base and leave the base alone and not mess up my Griffin. And then uh, can get the King worked on. I think he'll be more work than this guy was just because he has more fiddly bits. Uh, yesterday I forgot to do answer the question, uh, what... Uh, miniature or diorama uh, really inspired me so I'm just gonna do it today even though it's you know it's late late work would be 10% off but um and there's not really a single thing I would say that anything on cool mini or not dot com I used to go there and just browse through their um, browse through their whole collection yeah, wrong way. there we go that square uh, browse through their whole collection and just look at all the work because there you'll find all sorts of amazing models and amazing work by people who are so much more skilled than I am that it's ridiculous. I mean, just ridiculous. But uh, but that, that was yesterday's question, so we won't really spend much time on that. Uh, today's question is, what model and miniature range are you working on outside of the painting challenge? And there's actually a couple for me. Uh, one is, I have a little Minoth army for War Machine. Um, and as you can see, this is the most painted Minoth miniature that I have, and it's not really painted at all. You know, it's got a little base coat on it, it's got some accent on it, and that is it. You know, nothing nothing major. I really haven't gotten into into painting it. I started painting it and then just didn't have anybody to play the game with, and so I was like, meh, I'll do that later. And put it into the box, and then uh, my buddy in town has really gotten into War Machine, so I've gotten to play it a little bit more. Gotten more into the game. It's a really interesting game. I like it a lot. Uh, you can get get by with low model counts and still have interesting, quick, you know, 30, 40 minute games and uh, play. And uh, it, it's after you get into the higher numbers, like the 35 and 45 and 50 point games, you the price difference between it and say Warhammer Fantasy is not really that big, and you'll 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 end up spending as much. But you can get in with a $50 battle box or a $35 battle box and get the rule book and get the get these guys and get all sorts of stuff as a good starter set. But uh, anyway, there's that. I'm also working on my Eternal project, the uh, my Hail Caesar army with Macedonian phalangites. Let's see. Let's hold them up this way. Yeah, this these are phalangites. P H A L L 
spelling A N G I T E A T E S. Uh, they're basically phalanx men. They wore they had the big pikes. They're from the Alexandrian uh, slash Macedonian style of fighting from the 330s all the way down to actually until Rome defeated the Greek city states uh, in the 150s BC. Um, and then the pike phalanx kind of went out of style because the Roman legions just, you know, the, the flexibility of the legions and some blind luck defeated them. You know, the, the, the pikes were really great head on because you really couldn't get through. You know, this, is, this has got four ranks of eight, but the actual uh, phalanx units were 256 men strong and they would be uh, whatever the square is, 16 by 16, no, 32 by 32, whatever 256 the square root of 256 is. Uh, would be that by that. I think it's 16 by 16. And those would be the units. And head on, I mean, you just couldn't you couldn't get through the wall of pikes because the guys in the front would lower, the next guys would lower, and the next guys would lower. And you would eventually, is, essentially be four or five spearheads from each rank in your face, and you would still have to come in and get through their shield. Uh, the pikes are actually a very effective, um, well, effective enough arrow blocker because the pikes would be uh, the reason they're all kind of tilted there there we go the reason they kind of go forward in the little motion there is that the arrows when they would come in would oftentimes hit the pikes and think of it like if you're standing on a porch and you're trying to throw a rock between the uh the posts of the the railing how often do you hit the post and it's kind of the same thing but those are those guys i also have uh, units of cavalry uh, the pikes are from warlord games these cavalry are from aventine miniatures um, these were a lot of fun to paint. I have three more units of these guys to put together and paint. These are all metal, whereas the pikes are all uh, uh, plastic. And the plastics are much easier to work with than the metal because these are all drilled and pinned onto their horses. And uh, that the shields, I had to use a uh, the plumber's epoxy that I use for everything to get my metal together, JB Weld, because otherwise the shields just popped off. And uh, you know, there they go. They're all they're a little base and a little bit of flocking on the base. And then my, one of my two favorite models, and the other one's my favorite because it's the exact same thing, but uh, another one is the elephant. And, you know, you've got, how, how can you not like an elephant? But these are all painted and uh, washed in Army Painter Quick Shade, which is an amazing preservative for metal models. Because it, it'll keep the chips from coming off the metal, it'll keep the paint from chipping. Uh, you can kind of see here on the side, even before I washed it, it uh, some of the red had rubbed off from the uh, the elephant's robe there. But, um, but yeah, these these models were fun to paint. Uh, the elephant was actually really easy to paint because it's just, again, it's the same exact effect I used on this. It's just a dark gray with a little bit of light gray airbru uh, not airbrush, but uh, overbrushing. There we go. That's the term I'm looking for. You know, and the only detail I really worked on was that the tusks and the toenails and uh, the guys were easy to paint. I just painted them with the same method I painted the pikemen to make everything look uniform. And, the, you know, these these are some fun little models to put together and paint. Uh, expensive, you know, the metal models were, oh, I'm not going to tell you how much I spent on metal horsemen and metal elephants. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it was a lot of money. So, uh, but those those are the guys I've been working on. And hopefully I can get, like I said, you know, this guy has already gotten a couple chips from where I've worked with him. This this little stand base that I have on him, the the pin for his foot goes all the way down through the cork, so I really he's kind of high up for his center of gravity, and uh, really need to figure out a way to keep it from falling over. Nope, that was a good idea, but not really effective. That's kind of effective, but um, but again, you know, once I get this done and, and put onto the base, then. Um, then I will be ready to paint the king, and then I can say that, uh, hey, one, one model done. But we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon, and this, this will conclude my May the 4th challenge. You know, again, it's Star Wars Day, if you were unaware. I've already seen about 10,000 posts on Facebook, and everybody who wants to get clicks for their advertisement on the news is posting, oh, man, it's Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Ha, 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 may the 4th be with you. But, uh, you know, so clever. Uh, but, but anyway, hope you guys have a good evening. Adios.